Hey. hey, how's my how's my audio? Okay. Hi everyone! Thanks for watching. You can support our work on our website ageoftruth.tv, and please like our videos, subscribe to our channels on YouTube, BitChute, and Brightian, and remember to hit the bell for notifications and follow us on Instagram and Facebook to be sure not to miss any of our shows. You can sign up for our newsletter on our website, ageoftruth.tv. Hello and welcome to this edition of Age of Truth TV. I'm Lucas Alexander in Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the 2nd of February 2023 and we are ready with an explosive, a fascinating episode of our show with one of the most well-known faces within the arena researching the controversial topic of flat earth theory. He believes that we are living underneath a dome on a flat plane, not on a spinning globe. He has a lot of information to share with all of us and we are going in depth today when we meet David Weiss, also known to his followers as Flat Earth Dave. from Copenhagen, Denmark. This is Age of Truth TV and our website is ageoftruth.tv. We are on YouTube, BitChute, Brighton and other pl uh, other platforms, but you can find us on our website ageoftruth.tv if everything else crumbles. Thank you and good evening to our very very special guest tonight, David Weiss, joining us from Cancun, Mexico, where he is at the moment. To most people on his platform and people who know his work, he is known to people as Flat Earth Dave. And uh, I want to say thank you very much. This is a wonderful, fascinating, intriguing and very controversial topic. Uh, the topic of flat earth and we want to get as deep into what that whole thing is all about because I know that you're an expert and you've been studying this for many years. But first of all, Dave, welcome on Age of Truth TV. Thanks for having me, Lucas. I'm glad to be here and I love talking to people that have an open mind. And what I say is don't open your mind so much that your brain falls out. Don't believe anything I say. I'm going to point to some doors that you've never seen before, and I want you to use your God-given senses and think about them. Great. That's and it. and our show is, of course, we've heard just about everything here on Age of Truth TV. Uh, we always ask critical questions with, a, with, with discernment, but always with an open mind and an open heart. And we love to have a very good debate. And certainly this is a topic that has been dividing the truth community for several years now. I mean, this is almost like what we see in the world happening to us. You know, the Hegelian dialectic splitting, divide and conquer. And this is a big topic because a lot of people are now realizing in themselves that they feel that the truth is that the earth is flat, a flat plane underneath a dome and this is also what you believe and you have to take us through all of that today but of course regular science and everything we've been taught as when we're children all through our lives this is a spinning ball ball a globe 
and the, that the Earth is round. And all of that makes sense, obviously, when you look at the uh, regular science that we've been told. But before you go in and you have a great argument and you can go, go on for a long time, I just want to... Um, touch on something, let's say, uh, find common ground here with you, first of all, Dave. And that is, we are in this strange and crazy upside down world on this earth, whether it's flat or whether it's actually a spinning globe. What we are facing, all of us on this planet, the entire population of the earth is that the, the top elitists want to implement a new world order through the Great Reset and the ongoing UN Agenda 21 for the 21st century. Those tactics, Hegelian dialectic, divide and conquer, problem, reaction, solution, strategies, and what have you. And they're using all of these means, these um, world crisis events all of the time for total world dominance to create a one world government, totalitarian one world government and one world religion. I do know that I, I expect that we can totally agree on that. So my first question to you is, when all that is said and done, we all know what we're facing. We're all in the same boat here. Uh, and so why do we have to be so concerned about whether or not we're walking a spinning globe around Earth or a flat plane when the world is crumbling around us? Why flat Earth, Dave, is this such an, an <clears throat> important topic? You know, that's a question we all ask, and it's a very intelligent question. And I like it when the people ask that question. Normally it comes up a little bit later after you go, people say, what about sunsets? What about boats over the horizon? What about seasons? And I explain them all away. I explain how they actually prove the earth is flat. And then they throw their hands up and they go, well, what difference does this make? I still have to go to work on Monday. Well, I used to say the same thing. I'm in Mexico for a couple months, okay? I don't have to go to work on Monday because my entire life changed because of this, but that's not what it's about. <clears throat> um, it's a, this is a war against humanity that most people can't even conceptualize. It's an energetic spiritual war. It's the war to trap our souls. It's a war to disconnect us from creation. It's a war to limit our thoughts because they are afraid of our thoughts. They are more afraid of our collective thoughts. They're trying to divide and conquer. Um, our thoughts create our reality. And if you take people's thoughts and put them on a globe, right? Put them in a prison. You, you completely limit their power. So, so why does it matter? We're going to talk about that through the entire show. I'm going to keep coming back to it, why it matters. I'm going to add more and more and more to it, but first you have to understand. So you, you're, you understand that our thoughts create a reality. Everyone, your, your worst enemy is yourself, is your thoughts. Right. Everyone's thoughts create their world. People that live paycheck to paycheck, that's how they think. People that, you know, make millions and lose millions and then make millions again. It's the way that they think, you know, people um, that um, have patterns of relationships, patterns of things. It's all the way that you think and your thoughts when they're aligned and connected with, um, you know, reality really things manifest really fast in your life. And that's right? actually this law of so attraction, right? You're talking about and law, law of manifestation and thoughts create things. That's basically what you're saying. And then we also get into collective consciousness, huh? Yes, I used to laugh at that. Excuse me. I have a cough drop on my mouth. Um, I used to laugh at that concept. And <clears throat> then when I understand when I, you know, started using it things work you know i mean it's amazing how fast things manifest so let's just talk about what flat earth is and how it traps your mind how it puts your mind in a prison right so this is a balloon at 127,000 feet and you can see that this sun right here is not 93 million miles away it's right there it's lighting up the hot spot right here on the earth. So what is it? How far is it? I don't know. It's not 93 million miles away though. It's right here. And now this earth, is it spinning a thousand miles an hour below me or I'm disconnected from it and the balloon, it looks pretty stationary. 
okay? If the earth was a globe, it would be spinning a thousand miles um, an hour below me. When people say, well, let me look up flat earth, they look up and they get images like this. This is not flat earth. If this was flat earth, I'd be right there with everyone else laughing at flat earthers. This is the dumbest thing ever. This is mixing a fake flat earth model with a fake um, heliocentric model. No flat earther thinks that we're a disc, a pancake floating with other round planets, right? And whenever the mainstream media talks about it, they always show this image. Okay, this is not flat earth. Okay, um, so what is the what is the globe earth? Well, if you believe in the heliocentric model, you believe we're doing this, okay? We are spinning at a thousand miles an hour. So when you're watching the sunset, it's not going away as it appears and getting lower due to perspective as it appears. You're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound. You're on the top of a ball at noon and you're falling over backwards which makes the sun appear to go down. You're orbiting the sun at 66,000 miles an hour. You're chasing the sun at a, at a half a million miles an hour, right? But somehow all of the stars remain the same in the sky. Take a picture of the star any night of the year, same night next year, 10 years, same time. Every star is in the exact same position. To give you an idea of what that is, this is called the hypersonic sled track. I encourage people to just look it up on YouTube so you can hear it. It goes by at Mach 8.6. That's 8.6 times the speed of sound, right? You have to believe, if you live on a spinning ball, that you are orbiting the sun in an elliptical curving orbit, speeding up and slowing down, going approximately 10 times faster than this. You can't even conceive what twice this speed is, let alone 10 times. At the same time, we're chasing the sun at a hundred times this speed, right? We're on a, a lumpy rock surrounded by curved spherical water, surrounded by spherical air adjacent to a void, a vacuum of space. And the gases don't just fill the space like science says, but when we go out in nature, we see this. What does that tell you? What does this tell you? It's not moving is level water seeks its level right water seeks its level when we go out into nature on a calm morning we see scenes like this right i challenge somebody go in a yeah, car yeah but everybody uh, all, always say you know you have to go really far away from the globe to actually see the curvature and to see that it is round you know i mean even though i also claim myself that i've seen out of the out of, out of an airplane window that i could actually see the curvature when i was flying because we were pretty high up and i know you probably yeah. have an explanation for that because flat earthers do have an explanation for that but but i mean I mean, you feel that you've seen it and even taken pictures out of the window and you have seen it but I mean you have to go even further out there they say that's the official story to actually see the fact that it's round so everything will appear flat and that's why the mountain and the and you know the water st is still there in the lake and everything that you're showing that could easily be explained by you know regular science so, so let's, let's talk about that. It's good, great points. And we're going to talk about them and we're going to, these are things that you can actually prove. The first thing is when you're looking at an airplane window, the window is not flat, it's curved. So when you look at the airplane window while you're on the runway, you'll see the same curvature. But when you look into the distance, you see the same distance, you know, the sky meets the ground and that's the limit of your vision. When, when your when perspective brings the ground to the sky, that's as far as you can see. So at 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, you see the same distance. Okay. You see the same distance in all directions. So if you're standing here and you're looking out, you're seeing the same distance and you see this curve. If I draw a line across here, there's a curve, but that's just the limit of my vision. But my programming tells me, oh, that's a sphere. I see the curvature, but that's not how it works. Because if I followed this curvature around, like if you see curvature in front of you, by the time you turned around, you'd be pointing down at your feet. But reality, the, the horizon is still at the exact same level all the way around you. It's because you see in a circle. It's the limit of your vision. Right. So, and that, let me, people don't understand how perspective works. Okay. So let's look here. We got a yellow line, an orange line, and a red line. Which is the lower line and which is the higher line? Pretty are you, easy, uh, right? Are you asking me? I think, I, I think it's, you. I think it's better that you explain it actually, so that we don't well, get into strange I, territory. Pardon yeah, the yeah, pun. No problem. Everyone's like, well, this line is the higher line. 
well, this is not how our eyes see. If I, if I, um, if I look, if I bring this picture back up, right, this bush, the top of this bush right here is about 15 feet above sea level. The edge of this deck here is about 10 feet above sea level. And this yellow line is sea level. So this is the lowest line and this is the highest line. This is how our eyes see. It's reverse. That's okay? perspective. That's how we view That's things. perspective. Like now, a row we suddenly were, disappearing. Yeah, yeah. If we were on a globe, it would be worse because this because everything curves away and drops down lower and lower, right? But the way we see, the ground ramps up to your eye level and the sky ramps down. Okay. So we've gone up, we you know we we've we've sent balloons up as I showed you in the in the first shot 127,000 feet and there's no curvature and then you know the science um propagandists out there Neil deGrasse Tyson and, and such will come out and say well uh, you have to go up in a um in a in a in a jet fighter you know and you know and we show that you know they show again fisheye lenses and curved windows and then we're like look the one camera didn't have a fisheye lens and it's flat and so then we show up the, the balloon 127,000 feet um no problem and so now they're like, well, you can't see it even from as high as the space shuttle. They just keep moving the globe posts farther and farther away. Well, um, that depends on if, you know, if the, the images we get from a space shuttle is real or not. And that can certainly be debated, huh? Well, we can, we can, let, well, let's go down that road in a little while. Um, and I could show you, you know, if they're faking space once, they're faking it all the time, but I'll show you them faking space a hundred times. But Dave, I just want to, I just want to jump in here with a question I know I should ask in yeah. the beginning here, because, you know, re in regular science, globe earth and that whole uh, model there makes perfect sense and can be, and can easily be explained and uh, is uh, accepted by everybody around the world. And even in fringe science, meaning what also includes conspiracy researchers and, and scientists who dare to expose hidden truths, globe Earth can also be explained and make perfect sense. Uh, but then to you and a lot of people who are into flat Earth research and believe in that, that can also be explained and be accepted, but just that everything is reversed or upside down. It seems as almost, almost as if both things can, you know, be explained and maybe possibly be real. So, so let, let's address that. On a flat earth, the horizon is an optical thing that changes um, with magnification. On a globe Earth, if you're on a ball, there has to be a physical curve that you can't see past at a certain point. And and what I mean by that is, on um, on a uh, on a ball, twenty four thousand nine hundred one miles around, like they tell us, um, we would have we, there's a physical horizon. So this, here's a hallway here, okay, and it's curved. And if somebody walked around that hallway. You can't see them because they're behind here. So let's flip this hallway over and make it the make it the globe. And here we go. So we'll pretend this is the Earth. Now, if I had a person walk down, you know, down there, they would disappear behind this physical curve right here. Now, if I had a super zoom lens, I couldn't zoom in on them because they're being they're hiding behind a physical curvature. Okay, they're hiding behind a physical curvature and that curvature, if the ball is 24,901 miles around is um, not that far. It's at, at three miles, there's a six foot drop at three miles, there's a six foot drop. So that means a person, a six foot tall person standing at the edge of calm water cannot see the surface of the water beyond three miles because it drops below a physical curve but, that, but, but that, that, that's what si but scientists say that that can be measured that they can measure, can measured. Where, where the where the curvature is happening and where you can actually see it and notice it I mean where, where it's noticeable right. you know it takes right, right, well, that, well yes if the earth was a ball that size these are their measurements not our measurements their measurements the curve calculator says that at 100 miles there's six thousand feet of curvature right at this is a, a, a rig 9.4 miles away. The camera is one foot off the ground. At one foot, the horizon is 1.22 miles away. Let's round it up two miles away. We should not be able to see the surface of the water 
beyond two miles, less than that, right? But we can see the surface of the water from miles beyond the rig here. There should be at the rig, there should be 59 feet um, of missing rig behind us, but we can still see the water surface beyond there. The globe argument is the water in the distance is ramping up to eye height. The water closer is ramping up a little less. The water closer is ramping up a little less. The water in front of it is ramping up a little less and it all lines up flat or perhaps maybe the world is just flat, okay? The excuses the Globers have to come up with are so convoluted, and our answer is because it's flat, okay? Yeah, but then explain so me... sunsets. You can see the sun going down, and you can see, well, the moon coming up, and sometimes when the moon is rising, it's like huge and in your face. I mean, it's yes. gigantic. <laughs> and then when it's up there, when it's the highest up it gets, I suppose, it's actually much smaller or it appears that way. But also when the sun sets and uh, up and down, I mean, it's you can see it. On the globe, let's, huh? let, hold on. Let's 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 table that. This one more. Let me show you one more thing about perspective, and then we'll jump right into that because that's one of my favorite topics, right? So we don't see a boat out here, and what we're doing is we're zooming in, and as we zoom in, we're increasing the angular size, and as we increase the angular size, all of a sudden our eye goes, "Oh, look, there is a boat there." Okay. Now a glober would say that boat was over the curve, but how did I just zoom it in? So let's watch again. We're gonna zoom out. And these little waves in the foreground are going to hide that boat from the bottom up, just like my finger is. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then what's right? behind the boat? There, there, there should be There's millions of boats, boat. but you can't see them because they're further away and over the curve. Well, the other problem is, no, that, that's not true at all. We can see way, way farther. So let's, let's, uh, let's take it a little farther. The problem is you like if all the lights were off in my room right now you couldn't see me you can only see the light that's bouncing off of me and the atmosphere the the atmosphere um blocks um light and it, oh, light can only push so far so here is um a a a, a mount san jacinto from malibu 123 miles away you should only be able to see the very 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 tip of this mountain and on a, and on a clear clear beautiful clear day you can't see this mountain but this is an infrared shot that cuts through the haze and we can see the entire mountain okay and this you say this is from malibu huh yeah but there's this, it's should, always covered in smog in los angeles usually right well that, that, that again smog brain uh all, all sorts of stuff here's one um here, here's one this is from from Alusia, france there's a viewing spot out over the ocean and out here is mount canago and you can't see it, it's 175 miles away. According to Globe Math from this viewing spot, the very top, the highest point of Mount Kanegu should be over half a mile below the curvature. Hey, guess what, you can't see it. The sunlight that's bouncing off of Mount Kanegu isn't strong enough to send an image all the way back to your eyes. However, the sun is the brightest light in the sky. It can push through 175 miles, right? And so when we when we go a little forward, the sun moves away. This only happens twice a year when the sun lines up. It backlets the mountain, and right here, the top of this mountain should be over a half a mile below the curve. But it's right there, and it's not a mirage. Again, the Globers will say, oh, it, the sun and the mountain are below the curve, but they're refracting up, and you're seeing mirages of a sun and a mountain. Not true. Or the Earth is flat, but and it's the right sun. There in front of you. Okay, but the sun is so powerful; it lights up well your whole day. It's that's right. that's daylight. So right. if if the Earth is flat, why is not the whole? Why are we not? Uh, why is it not a day? Why is it not day every day? Day all the time. Day all I the time, it. and, and, yeah, and yeah. never a night, n never night time. And and what about the sun going down? How do you explain it? Okay, let's, can we start with the sun going down first? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this line here represents the path of the sun above the flat earth countertop, okay? And I'm moving the sun along and we're viewing it from a celestial point of view, a, a elevated point of view. And we can see that this line is straight and level. I show it in the video, perfectly level. These could be buildings, mountains, cloud deck, whatever, but the sun is above it and going straight. Now I have a camera on the other side, on the table, on the flat counter, looking up. And if I showed you this first, I'd say, is this line 
level and you'd be like no it's kind of going down i'm like is this sun going below this eye level horizon line which is actually above and you'd be like well yes it is and now i zoom in look at the angle of this this is a level line but it is actually right? a straight line you've done there a straight a it straight, is yeah. straight and level and so let's compare it to an actual sunset so the sun was going here it's going down 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 and look what's it going behind here this is what i call the atmospheric deck of opacity that's it clouds is going it's going behind clouds there well that well the atmosphere even on a clear day over a certain distance becomes opaque and i'm going to show you that um a hundred percent so here is here is um I, uh, um I filmed this a couple times freezing cold day super clear not over water i'm on the east coast in america i'm watching the sunset the sun was up here and it was going down 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 and if the earth was spinning it would just keep on going down 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 but it didn't it went down 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 and then it stopped and it sat here for 10 minutes this is super sped up okay the sun stopped my friends were at the beach over here they couldn't see the sun they saw it set 10 minutes ago and we just watch it disappear into the soup of the atmosphere watch again here the sun is just going away and it's light even the most powerful light in the world can't push through the clear sky i'm going back and forth here the sun and the only argument the globers have is photoshopped that this is photoshopped okay it's been filmed numerous times on my app the flatter sun moon and zodiac clock app um if you go to the more resources pages which is the web button there's a whole playlist of videos showing this showing the raw footage showing everything showing what happens when you use a solar filter you know the globers will always say put a solar filter on right whenever there's an eclipse there the government so here free glasses that will blind you from what's really going on in the sky so i just answered your question on why the sun appears to go down and why it gets dark because the sun goes away it takes its light with it right? so it has to do and with distance you say the sun is going further and further away from where you are, point of view, and then it gets right. darker and darker. Is that what you're saying, basically? Uh, that's what I'm saying. The sun moves across the sky. It sets due to perspective. It goes behind an apparent horizon, okay, because the sky and the ground meet, and it just goes away. This sun is not, we're not falling over backwards. The sun is just moving away, right? But and 99.9% .9 of the places that you watch the sun and people that watch the sunset, there's humidity, there's moisture in the air. However, there's certain places, this, this is an apparent horizon. It's just going beyond it. Here is a, a soldier in Afghanistan film this super clear, super dry. And the sun. Why, why is Paul McCartney is, there? Because he's singing the fool on the hill sees the sun going down, but the eyes in his head see the world spinning round. There's so much truth in music. Oh. It will blow your mind. Here's the sun going away. Okay, but we don't get to witness this from many places. It's just going away and, and that's it. But then, uh, then it becomes night and we have to face the night as always. And then there's a, sun, a sunrise of some hours later and then it's back to daytime. So what happens to the sun during the night where does it go if it goes in that direction you were just showing us when does it so, suddenly reappear so from where the sun is a look the sun is a local light let me make this a little bigger for you the sun is a local light and it takes its light with it wherever the sun is it's noon on this right now the sun it's noon in sydney australia now it's noon in central australia now it's noon in western australia and so wherever the sun goes it takes its light with it. This outer yellow line that the sun is almost on right now is December 21st, and it's called the Tropic of Capricorn. The inner yellow line is called the Tropic of Cancer, and it moves in there on June 21st, which is the height of our inner northern summer, right? Let me just speed this up. So the sun migrates in between those two lines every six months, six months in, six months out so that's how seasons work i'm going to explain that in a second but i wanted to say something but, Anything, but let me just ask you if i if i may uh, dave uh, just yep. for people to understand so the flat plane is what we see there on your thing there yep. and it, it looks like a ball from above it looks like a a globe but that means that the territory is flat is that's how you explain it but it is spherical it is a, a round 
flat form. Is that that's what you what is depicted there? Yeah, let me let me show you another another way because we. I mean, we it's not a square. Right. It, well, it, it's not a square. We live in what I call the Antarctic Basin. Okay, the Antarctic Basin. What is that? So a pond, a puddle, uh, a lake. There, what 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 stops the water from flowing away? It's the land that surrounds them that's higher than the water, right? The edge of a pond is higher than the water that holds the, contains water. Large bodies of water at rest need containment. They lay flat and need containment. They need lateral pressure. So imagine our entire world as a giant pond, right? You have all the continents and islands. They're all surrounded by water, but all of that water is surrounded by land. Okay, the largest land, the highest land on Earth is Antarctica. They admit that, okay? And you talk, about the, you talk about the ice wall surrounding it, and behind the ice wall, we get into really fascinating territory here. You say there are, and you and a lot of other people who talk about Flat Earth, say that there are many consonants, I think maybe uh, 14 in total, they talk about consonants, I mean, together with the consonants that we know. And then on the other side of this ice wall, there are a huge territory uh, filled with unknown uh, consonants. And then we get, get into that. That's pr probably speculation. There is no proof of any of that, but it's certainly a fascinating topic and very adventurous that yeah. I also want to get into because that could explain what extraterrestrial uh, beings and, and everything, you know, w w what we call aliens, what that is, very that good. whole thing is all about. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, um, Let's get into that. But so, so all of the water is surrounded by land. And so what's out here? And again, you, you're naming the number of continents, uh, you know, the more continents. Here's the thing. Anything beyond this purple line, which is 60 degrees south, is off limits, okay? It's off limits to uh, independent exploration. So anything beyond the shoreline of Antarctica, we are speculating. Now, you say there's no proof. There's a lot of stories. You know, there's a book called the... Uh, um, the Iron Republic, and it was about a congressman, a, a, a politician in New York that got fed up in the 1800s, sold everything, bought a ship, went to Antarctica and found an opening and ended up on the other side and found an advanced civilization over there, told he wrote all about it. You know, yeah, but in, are you talking about Admiral Byrd here? No, 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 no. I'm talking okay. about um, it's called the it's called the Iron Republic. And you can find it on YouTube if you just search the Iron Republic read by the Morgyle. That's the channel. He read the whole book for you. So if you like audiobooks while you're commuting or whatever, listen to it, and uh, it'll it'll blow your mind. So whether it's true or not, it rings true to me. Um, so several is... people have had that experience. Also, Admiral Byrd, who said that he went down to an opening in the North Pole, though, and went into an inner Earth civilization that the world uh, that the Earth is hollow, and that he saw all of these uh, fascinating beings on a beautiful world, and 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 unlimited energy and resources well. and everything. I have my uh, opinions on that may or may not be true. Um, I think that, you know, part of his story was concocted to trap us into be still believing we live on a sphere, but a hollow sphere. Okay. But let, let, sphere let's assume though, Dave, that your theory is yeah. right about flat earth, the ice wall and what is behind it. What if Admiral Byrd flew into whatever is a hole in that huge ice wall ended up on the other side in those other continents and had that those same experiences? I mean, that could very well well be that and then when he went back to the government saying oh i had all these experiences and they said oh well you have to say it's inner earth i mean inside it could and then he died well i mean that that could be explained that way certainly but it could also so, be that his truth or his, his way his experiences were the truth about the inner earth civilizations that's also an option that we've talked about uh, on on this so, channel as well so, so here, here's the thing, and I go back and forth. Maybe he leaked information he wasn't supposed to do. Maybe they killed him. Maybe he agreed to be disappeared. We don't know because that was a while ago. He's an admiral. He was a Freemason. Lots, lots of, lots of red flags. So let's maybe look, he we'll moved to one of those continents, Dave. Maybe, well, that, that actually, there's a book about that, and it talks about that he might be there. We're gonna get there in a second. Maybe he's recently. there right now with Jeffrey Epstein. Maybe, maybe, and, <laughs> and Michael Jackson. And everybody um, else, yeah. <laughs> so check this out. Let's say we cut this out. We, right between the green and the white, we cut it out and we now have our disc. We take that disc, we wrap it around a sphere. 
okay? This is the heliocentric matrix. It's a prison for your mind. It locks you into believing that you live on this ball and that's the end of the world, right? There are no pictures of Antarctica from space, right? No pictures of Antarctica from space. Um, Antarctica is one of those places that will, um, if they allowed us to, to, re to go there and, and explore, it would prove whether the earth is flat or not. Funny, that and the North Pole are both off limits. So check this out. Anyone can do this. Go to, go to your browser, not to the program, but to the browser, googleearth.com, right? And take out the measuring tool and start measuring continents. We measure, bam, there's a square, square footage or the square mileage of um, America. Let's try something in the South. We'll go to Australia and we'll, we'll draw some points around Australia and we'll get the approximate, according to Google, again, the deceivers, um, this is Antarctica, I mean, uh, <coughs> Australia, and now let's try Antarctica. Watch what happens here. When we go all the way around, hey, it's going to tell us how big Antarctica is, and bam, what happened? It won't let us, look what happened. It goes, it's wrapping around here, right? So let's try maybe something south doesn't work. We'll try New Zealand, right? We'll go around there. Okay, that worked. Same thing happens up in the North Pole, okay? Why are the two places that we're not allowed to go, we're not even allowed to measure them on Google Earth? Well, because What's they're the military military territories. Well, that's so 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 we can't measure them? We can't find out the square mileage? Yeah, I mean, that's interesting, isn't well. it? It's very thought-provoking. I'll, I'll take an interesting and thought-provoking, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, but so now, but many people about... I know people personally who's been to the North Pole and also to the South Pole, even also researchers into this field of truth research, and also people who not necessarily believe in the flat earth theory that also went to the South Pole. And also, I, I've spoken to scientists here who've been to the North Pole, but I don't know how far they actually got because when you I, I think it's only in the beginning of that whole uh, area there that you can actually go to, right? Right. So here are all of the bases at the South Pole Station, Amazon Base Station. These are all the places. Is that so the South went, Pole we are seeing here from the South? Well, this is not the, this is or, the North Pole here. Okay. Yeah. And this is, there is no South Pole. This is the, the land that surrounds our pond. This red line or the white line is the edge of our pond. So, and so, so, so the red line or the white beyond that is the ice wall is Antarctica, right? Or what? Right. The so whole what thing. What I showed around. you in Antarctica mm -hmm. is, is all of this white area wrapped around a ball. Right. Right. So nobody from this base goes to meet anybody from this base on the bottom at the center. Never happens, never will happen because they're way, way, way too far apart. But here, here's something I need to show you. Okay, so you know, here's just another depiction. Here's uh, and and Edmondson Station, right? It's like out here, right? So if somebody went here and they said, "Hey, you're at the South Pole." How would they know? How would they know? Look how big America is. Look how big you can't even see Denmark, right? They're here. They, <laughs> well, we're the smallest country are. in the world, or one of them anyway. Yeah, but they don't know. They don't know where they are. All right. So let me show you something that happened recently. Okay. So this is a map that was found in um, that was found in um, a, a Buddhist temple, and it was published in 1910 in a Hawaiian magazine, showing all of these other continents out mm -hmm. here. Fascinating. And okay. they're actually this is a very fascinating map. But I mean, this could also just just be made, and they, all of these territories or continents, they all kind of look like look the same like or i don't know why why is one more than the other i mean who who in, who who has measured that how do they know that this is the truth oh. who has seen oh, it's all worse. of that it's worse you're right listen i'm with you we don't have any proof but my point is when you go when you take a trip to antarctica which all of the companies 100 different companies that you can book with they're all run by the antarctic commission they're all under one company there's a hundred shell companies all run by the same people yeah. right so it's totally controlled yeah. but if we took you from santiago to the center of this continent here this is bigger than the united states canada and mexico combined it's twice the size okay right. they took you here and said hey this is antarctica all right and, and then they took you a little bit inland and they go this is the south pole 
How would you know? You wouldn't know. So wouldn't can know. I just Here's ask, something- do, do you think that consonants that we know of uh, from myths, but that we in this truth community, uh, you know, have come to believe is absolute uh, factual and it's been there, like Atlantis and L- Lemuria, do you think that they were there in the center of all of that where we are now? Or do you think they could be one of those consonants out there? You're asking exactly what I want to show you next. So give me, you know, one minute. It, no, I'll, we I'll can right spend there. a long time on that. I find it totally fascinating. All right. So, so what if the world was set up like this? What if this isn't always frozen? Okay. So this is interesting when you, you can go online and they've corrected this since we found this, you can go on to shipping. Uh, it shows you where all of the cargo ships in the world are. You click on and click on one of these dots. It'll show you, Hey, this is this ship captain's name registered here, size of the ship, where it's going, everything, all the information on the ship. Well, we found some ships that were way deep inside Antarctica, hundreds and hundreds of miles inside Antarctica. Like, how are they there? Isn't it land or frozen, right? And there was a line of ships going out this way, okay? Like, or in, whatever you, however you look at it, we look at it as out, you would look at it as in, uh, if you're a globe person, right? So we click on this one, very little information, very, very little information. So we're like, what, what's going on here? And uh, it said uh, the ship was 580 meters long, 80 meters wide. That is a gigantic ship, 580 meters. That's like almost 2000 feet. Okay. That is a monster ship. And when we clicked on it, we said, where is this, um, where is this ship registered? And it was registered to an island called Kiribati. Ever hear of Kiribati? Is that the one in the the middle of the Pacific Ocean? In the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I got a pin on it because you can't even see it. Uh Zoom in, right? This is a little sandbar, okay? There's sand people that live here, okay? Like in Star Wars. Well, glad you pointed that out. Hold on to (laughs) that thought, okay? Mm -hmm. So so I'm going to bring Star Wars right here to Florida. Oh, look, there's a place called London and Poland and Paris there. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and so interesting, the United States government, the Chinese government heavily involved in this country, right, in this island. And um, they say it's a key shipping point. And um, they uh, they say that um, it, uh, oh, no, China gave it $10 billion recently. This oh. little sandbar, $10 billion. How big is that what? island? Do you know? It's tiny. It's tiny. It's you can't you go on Google Earth, Google, Google it, and you won't even see it until you're really close and it just shows up. Um, it's a tiny little atoll, right? But so, you, but could you walk the island or do I mean around, around I, the I island? I mean, I think it's you know, I don't know, 20, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing somewhere between 15 and 50 miles wide, okay? Uh-huh. Somewhere in there. That's my guess. You know what? I'll measure it for you. Oh, um, doesn't matter. It's just here's my you. question. Here's my question What if there are other advanced? worlds out here, continents. Um, and what if there was a shipping lane there? They're trading, tech, trading technology, trading food, trading uh, human trafficking, whatever, right? If there was this trade route going on, how would you ever know? Well, you, you would, would never know. You, would, you wouldn't know, no. You would never know, right? And so, you know, we have all of a sudden, you know, we have computer chips, we have all of this stuff. Where is this stuff coming from? But Maybe I mean, we also know, we already know that they have a huge underground network in the world that we know, on the earth that we know, that they can go underneath the ground uh, from one side to the, to the, uh, to, to the earth from one side oh, I, to I'm the other you. and maybe they can i mean if that was real with all of these extra extra terra extra terrestrial extra continents there then uh, maybe they could go underneath whatever is the ground that you believe is the flat plane I, going out I agree. there mm-hmm. so so let's look at this what what if what is going on here um a little internet, it's a little, a little slow down. I'll do it another way. What if um, the world was set up like this? So here's our pond. Okay. <laughs> this ring here is Antarctica. Okay. This ring is Antarctica. And out here, look, the shipping lane right out here, extra territory, extra terrestrials. This maybe is where the Iron Republic is, right? Advanced civilization that left here in the 1600s because of tyranny. The people that started that city. That that war that con- that um, civilization said that they were tired of the tyranny that was going on in here in the 1600s, 
So they left. Still right? going on. Still happening. Well, it's happening. I say, imagine that tyranny going on, right? But so now they have the whole world thinking they're on a ball and no one's even thinking about going out here. Let's spread this out even farther, okay? What if uh, our pond actually has three rings, right? There's more out there. But here, here's the one that I really want you to see is, I wish I, I, I can bring it up. My app won't, won't load, of course. Um, no, but I see, I see that image perfectly though. Yeah, all right, but here, here's the thing. So now that image is right here. What if we live in this pond? And what if there were other ponds that were just tens of thousands of miles away? You know, and you know, maybe from here to here is 80,000 miles, whatever. Oh, wow. Okay. But so, so everything here is still on a flat plane, you say? That, that is just- A scientifically possible flat plane, an enclosed plane. So, so think about this. What do you call, the, so each one of these ponds is taking up a piece of the plane. Agreed? A, a portion of the plane, a piece of the plane. What is another word for a piece of the plane? A planet. A planet. P and people also say that uh, a planet is plan E-T. Plane dash T, right? Planet. Plane, the word plane. But also pla they just pla added a T plan E-T. It's just another, yeah. some people say that, like it's a plan from uh, made by the extraterrestrials, whoever they are, and, but we'll get into that as well. And extraterrestrials are coming. Could if they're coming from anywhere, they're coming from the extra terra across our plane. So imagine each one of these a different planet, right? And you have different worlds: Lemuria, uh, and the Anunnaki come from one. You know, you have all of them, all of these other worlds here. And some of them are hostile. Some of them are friendly. Some of them, you know, you have a a, a the the Galactic Federation. This is the the federation of all of these planets here on earth so right? you're saying that everything is the earth what we see in this whole everything. thing and it's, it's gigantic all it's huge and there are many worlds and everything that we've come to understand as alien extraterrestrials and reptilians and uh, the nordics and uh, right. insectoids and whatever what have you they're all right. part of this uh terra uh right. earth plane that is just gigantic beyond belief so that the universe is actually let's say inside of that whole plane and then why do you think it's not outside of a globe in another you know well, uh, other gonna, planets and other universes let's talk about and that. all of that Let, let's talk about that and and i bring this up in every interview and i think i need to bring it up in every interview because people don't understand you need to bring it up obviously because people the audience will have that kind of a question however i do i do want to go back to that talk there because i do find all of that very interesting uh if right. not if for nothing else for entertaining entertainment reasons because it is quite fascinating but it's also uh very thought provoking and that's what a show like this is all about right there's a book called The Navigator Who Crossed the Ice Wall that talks about all of this. And one of the things that they bring in, it's literally the story of Star Wars. It's about people traveling from planet, from planet to planet across the plane. There's hostile lands, there's friendly lands. And they talk about the power that everyone has. They call it the source. Everyone is connected to the source. Sounds like the force to me, mm -hmm. right? Sounds sure like the does. same thing. The story of Star Wars is here on Flat Earth. But can I just ask you, because the, the audience would want to know this. So the the planets, those round yep. uh, Ponds. circular areas. Yep. Uh, that And there are many of them on that model you showed on that image. Yeah. So what is around that? Is that oceans? And then you enter that field that looks like a... A globe, just a f f from a from an from a, a perspective above, uh, so, when you look down on that flat plane. <laughs> how, how do you enter? I don't know. I, I haven't been out there, but one way is maybe there's waterways. Maybe it's all frozen. Maybe there's tunnel systems that connect them. Okay. Maybe there's um, civilizations that have aircraft that can pull energy out of the ether and travel these great distances. Just you know the 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 um 
the secret space program. I think it's the secret propulsion program. They don't want us to understand that they have ships that can pull energy right out of the air and don't need to carry tons and tons of fuel that's pulled out of the ground. Right? Do you think that, that this is what was what Hitler, Hitler and the Nazis, well, discovered in the 30s? And in, in, of course, in the 40s, uh, that and they went to Ant Antarctica and the South Pole, as we very well know, and supposedly they did, uh, they created bases there. But was that actually the the real discovery? You think that they that they made there that that there is a world beyond what we are told? There's many world leaders that go to Antarctica, they go to South Pole Station and then they disappear for three days and then they show back up at South Pole Station and they leave. I think that they're going to these outer worlds, maybe within our pond or maybe in another pond, and they're getting their marching orders from the beings that are really ruling this place, that are ruling the people that we call the rulers. But don't right? you think that the technology is so advanced now, and we know that the military has the technology, secret mi military technology that's supposedly several hundred years ahead of what we are being told. So don't you think they're able to teleport from one territory to another without having to actually travel there physically? Well, you know, that is a possibility. <clears throat> um, that they have ways to travel um, in between them. But I think the whole idea of teleporting and folding space is a way to um, explain heliocentric space, how, how you make up these incredible distances when in reality, they're just a few thousand miles away rather than light years away. Yeah, so but let, then maybe- we talk maybe, about that? Yeah, but then maybe they could still like teleport from Paris to London, it's not very far. Just in, instead of not use, spending it, time going from one place to the other. I mean, space is still around us, whether you believe it's a spinning globe or a flat earth. I mean, the air you can breathe outside. That's the, that's the world that surrounds us and the elements, huh? the ether. The, these are fun things to think about, and uh, I haven't seen it yet. I don't doubt that they could exist, but I'm not going to claim that they do exist. But I am going to claim that we can travel the distances between these outer lands um, in a reasonable amount of time. Let's talk about heliocentric space for two minutes, if you don't mind. In our heliocentric world, the globe model, the closest star is four and a half light years away. That's the closest one. Okay, four and a half light years is 25 trillion miles. Is so that is that Alpha Centauri or what's it called? Um, I, you know what, I, I, it might be Alpha Centauri, but whatever, whatever that star is, it's 25 trillion miles away. That's the closest one. The other ones are magnitudes farther, magnitudes. Well, let's just look at the closest one. So I'm going to put you on a spaceship in a heliocentric world, and you're going to travel a mile per second, and you're going to travel for one trillion seconds. You've gone one trillion miles. Mile per second, no one's ever gone that fast. You traveled for one trillion seconds. You've now gone one trillion miles. Simple math, got it? Okay. You are now 125th of the way to the closest star. You got to do that four more times, no, 24 more times. Yeah, right? but nobody's go, doing that. I'm showing you how far that is. Do you know how long one trillion seconds is? You've gone one trillion miles, mile per second. You've been traveling for a trillion seconds. Do you know how long that is in time? Millions of years, maybe. It's 31,000 years, okay? Oh. You know, millions of years is the closest guess anyone's ever gotten. All right. 31,000 <laughs> 31, years. So these distances are scientifically impossible. First, the other well, thing is- That's why they you know, use teleportation, these aliens, they say. I've spoken to many UFO researchers about that. They can bend time and space. It's nothing f for them, supposedly, of course. And they can. that's why they can even travel tr uh, uh, from one star system to the other and, you know- Or one uh, pond to the other, and it's a lot closer than they're telling us. Well, that was just, just what I was saying before. Maybe yeah. they also do that. They don't have to, uh, you know, take an airplane or a ship to to Antarctica and uh, through the ice wall and all that. Maybe you can just go into a teleportation stargate kind of thing. I guess leaders of the world that go to Antarctica are not allowed to use that technology, which is why they take conventional airplanes. They're probably not pretty low level. So my point is heliocentric space traveling impossible light years through a scientifically impossible space vacuum or traveling inside a pressurized level plane where everybody's standing upright, up is up, down is down for everybody. People aren't standing antipodal to each other on opposite sides of the world. Um, 
Yeah, to but me, time only makes... exists in the in our three time uh, on this three dimensional plane, right? In the three dimensions, right. time, we have time, and then after the fourth, it kind of dissolves, and then when you go to another. Let's say dimension uh, time does not exist. So if you, it's only that's a, f a matter of, f of physicality. And if you have to travel all of those distances you talk about, it wouldn't be possible. So to bend time and space, teleportation or power of thought, really advanced uh, technology or physical abilities that are interdimensional, really probably also what we had in the past, building the pyramids through power of thought and all of that. But we also talked about is possible. We've been totally dumbed down and we almost know practically nothing these days. I mean, the, the population, all, all information being kept from us. But I mean, if we assume that the impossible is possible, then all of that, the distances and all of that is not a problem. Well, the distances are not impossible if you're, if you, you know, can prove teleportation. So let's just assume that's true. Many people um, have talked about that. Even Nikola Tesla uh, talked about these things. And also we know teleportation is true. Even at the Niels Bohr um, Institute, you know, the, the, the atomic scientist, they actually uh, said officially that they teleported one particle from one room to the other. I mean, and if they can do that, they can, I mean, it's not about time then, it's not about distances. I mean, of course so, they probably lie, they did much more than that, but you know, teleportation should be nothing when you talk about uh, flat earth and territories and all of that. Why, why, why is that not possible? Well, we're talking about, you know, what we can scientifically prove and what we can speculate on. You know, no one has ever been able to show high pressure next to low pressure without a container. Yeah, but right? all but information they, being kept from us, certainly also if the flat earth theory is right, you know, and people can still, all of these scientists are also proving the globe theory. I mean, why should all governments in the world, all world leaders, all uh, scientists simultaneously lie about the globe model? I mean, that would, that's like a really major psyop and people that doesn't even know each other throughout time and all of that. Why would all of them be able to cover that up? Wouldn't somebody actually discover, oh, wow, we are in a flat plane. The whole globe thing that I thought was real well, is actually a lie. I mean, could the whole world be... Uh, they are not, every, uh, not everybody is lying, right? They believe this is true. Have you heard about the two astronauts that uh, admitted that uh, we've never been to space and that the Earth is flat? I'm not sure well, about I'm not sure about whether they said the Earth is the Earth is flat. That I haven't heard, but I do know astronauts that said that it was actually impossible to go to the moon, and those some of those, them were actually supposedly there, and you know, and uh, the whole moon thing is also very very so uh, let's let's uh, suspicious. let's bring it back to uh, what's going on here now. Let's talk about NASA for a little bit, mm. and and let's look never at a few straight of NASA's lies. Never, yeah, never a straight answer. Not a space agency, right? So this is. Um, this is the uh, a picture of the space shuttle from i mean the space station from the space shuttle right and hold on what is going on here is this uh hold on a second i um where is it so does that look real to you i mean we're looking at a this is the space shuttle right <clears throat> it's it's a it's literally a model, but that's that's actually not the one I wanted to show you. Here, right? then they show you this, right? They always have a little selfie. You know, we're looking down on the Earth, right? That's kind of weird, right? Well, we do know, or at least a lot of us in this field do know that the whole NASA narrative is very suspicious and they're creating uh, fake films and images and and hanging from wires and stuff like that that's not even right. about that's not even just uh whether you are a flat earther or not that you can that you can tell that a lot of that is is uh is full of deception but i mean from your point of view of course we want to hear uh how you see it well there there's there's so many so many um you know so many things just from the moon landing like yeah have you ever taken a close look at the rover i mean this is an umbrella curtain oh. rods lawn chairs right there's these are supposedly metal tires mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. this is a jeep 
chassis, right? Stanley Kubrick, to- Kubrick did a, an okay job, but not, not a perfect job, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know who filmed it, but it was probably him. And then uh, this is a um, the the Russian the Russian rover. I don't. It's not showing right for some reason. Let me just make that a little smaller. Is that um, Yuri Gagarin? Yeah. When, when when we look at at the here we go. So this is this is literally the Russians rover on the moon. And this is the guy controlling it. They want us to believe that it this doesn't is look real. like very sophisticated technology, does it? Well, yeah, this was this was a while ago. I mean, absolute. Yeah, but a nonsense. while ago, what are you talking about? I mean, a while ago, they if they can go to the moon, they should have really sophisticated technology, shouldn't right. they? A hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> um, this is not even a model you, will, you would find in Star Wars that was even done in the 70s. They even have had better things there, didn't they? absolutely absolutely (laughs) right and you you remember this the first one of the first space spacewalks i mean was that the the guy that jumped out of out from that that space station or was it he's in a jet pack right so you have to remember the earth is corkscrewing through space at a half a million miles per hour in you know moving sixty six thousand miles an hour how does he ever catch up if he's get i mean none of it makes any sense uh, you know, the the space station falling around the earth uh, it's it's insanity it's to, quite to daring believe. one would certainly say huh if you already yeah. have a problem jumping from a little bridge right. in a swimming pool <laughs> right and now they use these green screens and layering and they're not even in the same room all of a sudden this woman changed colors you know all, all the colors reversed which shows that they're using layering maybe she's um, a blue alien Maybe she's a blue alien, right? And here we got Kamala Harris talking um, on the space station. And this guy, when he's talking, he's flipping his wires around the whole time. And like, you know, always showing, oh, that's so cool. And everyone's just focused on the wires. But if you zoom in on these wires, you'll see that they go right through his hand. Right, Watch where his watch is. The wire goes right through his hand, right? Because it's not really there. Went right through his wrist. But couldn't that just be a bad resolution, the picture? I mean, sometimes things do change and eyes change and everybody thinks, oh, they're, they're reptilian. I mean, yeah. a, lot, a lot is happening in when you see a picture filmed badly and, you know, uh, not everything is CGI, is it? Or maybe so it is. What about this? They're looking out at the space station. Did you see that? No. It, it, it went inside the window frame. Oh, Look. yeah. That's not very good, is it? No, that's not very good. I'll, I'll take it not very good. I'll take it not very good, right? And then this woman here is, um, she's not even looking out here as she's closing this hat. She's looking at a monitor over here, right? And she- Oh, and wow. Want, really wow, want, look, she has higher hair really than watch, me. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's something I want to point out. Um, why would they allow a woman to have long hair? She has like the shortest hair of anyone. Women have all long hair. They would never allow long hair on the space station. It's disgusting. But when we when we actually look at her, it gets worse. Look at her makeup. It's perfect. It's heavy duty makeup. How do you put makeup on in space? Okay. Well, I none mean, none of you, this would be allowed. No well, makeup. No long hair. I mean, you could put, put it, makeup it, it, on, it, couldn't you? I mean, that wouldn't be it, too strange or. Well, the powder would be going all over the place, right? And other times when they're hanging from wires and they, they at the end of their interview, they do a little, little trick. Sometimes they get tangled in their wires. So these guys are going, let me just jump forward a little bit here. And all of a sudden he gets tangled in his wires. Okay. And they're, they're panicking. The guy in the red will go over and eventually hit a reset button. This guy doesn't know what to do. This guy gets out of the scene real quick. He's tangled in his wires and if you watch, let me jump forward a little bit. On his shirt, you can see a wire pulling his shirt out. Okay, All right. And I'll do a quick zoom in on that. Give me a second here. And they're stuck upside down. Watch, boom, ready. And that happened right when the other guy pulled the switch. You could hear him. Yeah, but it looks left. like a hand. Well, S- somebody it's, behind it's him. Some, it's something moving out this and this guy's hitting the switch you hear click click and the boom the wire moves 
and moves his shirt, okay? Um, it looks like a hand, be- though. They could be pulling from the other side one of the other guys. Well, you don't see a hand there, right? It looks so, like a hand. They do all of their spacewalks uh, training in the in the in a pool, mm-hmm. right? And there's green screens in this pool, right? There was a, there was actually physical green screens in the pool, but they were doing a documentary on it. And while they were showing it, they accidentally showed a screen with a green screen. Why do they have a green screen when they're filming a- astronauts in there? And their answer is uh, to make it more realistic for the astronauts. Well, that's not how green screens work. No. Right? No. It, it, that's that's not how green screens work. It's not to and make here, it more r- realistic because they won't see it or feel it around them. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. So, yeah. So it, it, here, let me just show you. I'll just jump to this one. This is, uh, you know, after a spacewalk. Look at this door. What is this door made out of? Is it a tortilla? I'm in Mexico. That's why I'm thinking tortilla. Oh, okay. makes me hungry. Yeah. So how is that? going to do it. Yeah, how is that door? going to uh, separate Secret him man. from space, huh? Yeah. I mean, how it's not going to hold hold up for very long. Right. Right. <laughs> Why is there fruit on this table? Why is there fruit sitting on a table in zero gravity? Okay. Right. Here's Don Pettit um, showing how he made a cup. He's tired of drinking out of a bag. So he made a cup and he's got coffee in there and he's drinking the coffee and it's coffee's not real watch the coffee become out of a sink ready bam out of sink oh okay how does the coffee become out of sink with the bag all right then we have these are uh, obviously uh real images that you took and nobody has from nasa from nasa NASA nobody has tampered with these pictures huh Correct. Chris Hatfield loves singing. And so he's singing. The other guys hold the microphone. The other guy's actually in a different room and misplaces where Chris's neck is and sticks the microphone inside of his neck. Oh. The microphone is inside of Chris Hatfield's neck. He never misses a beat on the song. Okay. And it's because they're in different rooms. Right. So, I mean, we, then- are, I mean, we can very easily and have for a long time, certainly, well, agree on the fact that NASA is not telling us the truth right. and there's a reason for that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, yeah, I see that. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, uh, the Earth is flat, huh? I mean, how do you, how do you explain well, I- gravity and gravity's pull? I mean, so that I don't float off uh, from, from the ground here and, and you as well. Okay, so you know that gravity is just a theory, right? It's a a theory that they came up with, and then they said, well, you know what? It doesn't work unless 96% of it is dark matter and dark energy, which no one's ever seen and no one's ever measured, but it has to be or gravity doesn't work. So when you have a theory and you need to make up something fictitious to fill in 96% of it, you throw the theory out, but nope. They say it has to be because gravity needs it because without gravity, they don't have their their ball, right? So gravity is just a theory and the electrostatic charge but, but, but that, is that, not a theory. That's what you postulate, huh? It's not, I mean, how, you say gravity, I mean, that can be measured. That That is an actual fact, right? No, can correct. So gra- gravity is a theory and they made it up and they, uh, they, they ignore the true force, which is the electrostatic force. But so if I took the- one of those pieces of fruit, just or going to a supermarket, buying some fruits or actually harvesting them myself from a tree in Mexico, let's say, and I want to eat it, but it falls from my, I, I drop it and drops to the ground. That's gravity. No. So no. that that is something that is buoyancy and density. Right. So if I dropped a handful of if I had a helium balloon, rocks and ping pong balls in my hand, I held them over a pool and I let them go. The balloon's going to go up. The rocks, and the ping pong balls are going to go down. The ping pong balls will sit on top of the water and the rocks will go to the bottom. Yeah, that's but if you buoyancy. put helium in a balloon, that's known to everybody. Then it will go fly in the air. It, it goes up. It defies yeah. gravity, even though even though it has weight. OK, but that's what so helium the the does. Moon, huh? That's what helium does. So helium goes up. You know that they tell us that Jupiter is the, 
has more gravity than all of the other planets combined. Okay, right. that's what NASA tells us, right? And they also tell us Jupiter is made up of 99% helium and hydrogen. And here on Earth, helium and hydrogen defy gravity. So how much helium and hydrogen do you need to create more gravity than the rest of the planets, right? They, they want to confuse your mind because that is absolutely ridiculously and, conf and com confusing. So gravity is a made up theory that we can't test or prove. And the electrostatic force is a proven theory. Okay. So let me, uh, let me show you. Um, and what do I mean by that? The ground has a negative or neutral charge. Okay. Um, and the ground is not moving. Right. And everything in the air is surrounded by a positive charge. So positive and negatives attract grounds, not moving. So the positive and negative and say, Hey, down is this way. Okay. And then buoyancy and density sort everything else out. Um, and, they tell us, science tells us that the electrostatic charge is 10 to the 36, I think, 36 to the 39th, doesn't really matter, power stronger than the gravitational, the weak gravitational force. So if gravity was real, let's pretend, and we know the electrostatic force is real, and it's 10 to the 39th power stronger, then how can you assume that it's gravity that's making something go down and not the electrostatic force? Let me show you an example. Here we have some leftover party helium balloons. We tied them, there's a little button on here and it's neutrally floating just above the floor a little bit, okay? This wire goes to a Van der Graaff generator and we're gonna crank up, we're gonna add a positive charge, uh, make it a stronger positive charge and it goes down just by adding a positive charge to it. And then we discharge it and it goes back up. So what do we do? Do we make it heavier or do we change the charge? Now, if you look at the periodic table of elements, every atom that's heavier than the next one has a stronger positive charge. You with me? So lead has a stronger positive charge than oxygen, right? That's why lead is heavier than oxygen, right? Or, or you know, whatever elements you want. Okay. And so that goes along perfectly with the electrostatic theory, right? So that makes things go down. What about making things go up? Here we have this tinfoil triangle. We add a negative charge to it. What happens to it? It goes up because we're keeping a negative charge into it. Is it defying gravity or is it defying electrostatics? But there are wires okay. in it. And well, that the wires are just keeping a negative charge because if we didn't have the wires, it would be in the air. It would get a positive charge and would come right back down. Okay. So here's something without wires. Um, this is by uh, by MIT. They created, it's called the silent drone, right? It has no moving parts. It is silent. And all they're doing is changing the electrostatic charge of this and it flies. Now, is it defying electrostatics, which is 10 to the 39th power stronger than the alleged force of gravity? Or is it defying gravity? Well, so somebody like me would never know if there's a machine in it or it can fly like a drone or something. I, I wouldn't personally know that, but I mean, it's uh, certainly fascinating. Well, you can, you can go see these things. They're at right. shows and, and stuff. So um, this is proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's defying the electrostatic force. Here's a guy in Russia that um, he created something and he does the same thing. He puts a negative charge into it and it floats. It floats, right? And so is it defying gravity, the made up theory of gravity, the, which is the uh, a fraction of a fraction of a fraction less powerful than the proven electrostatic force? Anybody that can see this, understand what I'm saying and still throw out the word gravity, is just been indoctrinated so much that they're not able to think critically, right? So, you know, take your time. He here's my thing. In my app, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, there is a button called the Frequently Asked Questions button. I hit that button, up come the Frequently Asked Questions, and there's the Gravity button, okay? If you click that, it's gonna take you to all of the videos that YouTube doesn't want you to see explaining the stuff that I'm talking about way better than I am right now. Right, all of these videos are hidden on YouTube. They won't let you find them unless you literally type in the channel name and the exact video. Um, yeah, we know all about shadow banning here. Questions.
What's that? Uh, we know all about shadow banning, censoring, censorship, and ghosting yes. and all of that. It's absolutely a terrible time, and freedom of speech is no longer real here. I mean, on, on planet Earth. So, um, uh, Dave, so, uh, yeah, are you still on gravity now? Well, the, the, the last thing I want to say is, so here is a, a, um, a balloon. This is a balloon, and I'm holding it, and it is being... It's hanging down because it's heavier than the air, right? And I say the electrostatic force is um, pushing it. Globers say that gravity holds the air down to Earth. Gravity pulls the air down, and space can't suck it away because gravity is holding it down. But, but all of that is scientifically what? proven. No, it's not. All right? It's not. It's the electrostatic force. And the other thing is, you look at clouds. Clouds weigh trillions of pounds. And the globers will say, well, water molecules, they're, they're individual molecules that are so light that they float. A water molecule is heavier than an air molecule. Gravity can hold the air down, but it can't pull the trillions of tons of water out of the clouds. Doesn't make any sense. I'm going to prove it right here. So I fill this balloon with air. What is the air trying to do? It's trying to escape in every direction, including up. It's trying to escape in every direction, including up, okay? Air fills the available space until it reaches its equilibrium, okay? We are in an enclosed system. Now, people will say, well, the air gets thinner and thinner as you get higher and higher. Yeah, that's true, but it's in a container. You get a, um, a container of any gas, uh, propane, you know? You got a half tank of propane, liquid at the bottom, thicker in the, just above the surface, and it gets thinner and thinner and thinner to the top. And, and that's because it's a natural gradient due to buoyancy and density and it holds together. Make a hole in that container and all of the gas will disappear. And now, and now you're talking out. about what Flat Earthers believe that we are in an enclosed system underneath a dome, right? As some kind of a glass ceiling. Well, that is, you know, I, I don't know what it's made out of. You know, the Bible says it's uh, molten glass. Um, it could be energy it could be water it could just be air pressure um you know god separated the waters from the waters if you want to follow the bible um i think that space is liquid and i don't think anyone's ever been there and uh there's tons of videos if you go to what about um but why yeah, so, the dome, uh, though, Dave? Why the dome? Everybody talks about this. Why underneath the dome? The, you say that this is a flat territory. It's gigantic and all these worlds and, and these round, uh, small smaller territories or, or domes on the flat plain. And then this giant dome. Why, why, why aren't we just floating in space? And then both things can be right, so to speak, that we can go to different solar systems and all of that. Base is scientifically impossible. You can't have balls of gas floating in a vacuum. Gas fills the available space. We look at nebulas, and they tell us that it's dust and gas condensing, falling, collapsing into stars and creating stars. How do you have dust and gas in space? So how do you explain all of the other planets? You can see them and we can measure them. We can see them through telescopes and some we can even film with a very, very good camera. Like we can film the moon and go really deep. I can even with a good camera that I have uh, take pictures of the craters on the moon. Oh, yeah, I have, I have taken amazing pictures. And what, what those, you know, why are they all perfectly circular? That's another question. This is what Mars really looks like when you zoom in on it with a super zoom um, lens. Okay, it's not a burning ball. It's not a dusty ball reflecting sunlight. And again, you know, it, it's hard to go through the the math to, to show you um, that these are scientifically impossible. You look up, you know, all the planets are in the, our night sky now, and um, you look up at Mars and Jupiter. They're like as bright as the sun. Jupiter is literally as bright as the sun. It's just tiny. Um, but you have to believe that. You know, if you were stand as far away from the sun as Jupiter is, the sun is tiny. You have to believe that that tiny sun is lighting up the non-reflective surface of Jupiter, and it is reflecting all the way back the millions and millions of miles to Earth, and I can see it as bright as the sun? That makes no sense. The inverse square law of light says every time you double the distance of something, it's a quarter of the brightness. You could not see those so this is well in know, the past people believed that saturn was actually the sun you know and that that's why they started with this uh, saturnian and saturn worship 
Satanism, really, that's how it all ties in, I suppose. Kronos, the god, the prohibitor. Um, yeah, the, 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 a lot of that stuff is um, what they talk about, but people are saying that it's a it's a rock, it's a ball like Earth, right? Um, not necessarily. Not. I also think a lot of people say that it's uh, gas forms and I don't know if some, some of it is physical or not. And then the, there are the rings, rings around Saturn. A lot of people have come out in this field and said that those rings are being used to control our frequency here on Earth for frequency control, for mind control, for collective mind control. So, and that's in astrology. We know that Saturn is the well, the prohibitor and the 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 god that wants to um, the the grim reaper in in, in other words, huh? Death. Lucas, Lucas, you believe in astrology? I think that's a very very uh, fascinating and very very important topic, and I'm apparently a lot of it is very very real. So I'm with you. So, you know, when Mars is in retrograde, we have to be careful on what we do. There, there's issues, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Okay. Well, you can read I'm a horoscope. You. I'm with you 100%. Now, let's look at it in two models. Mars is millions and millions of miles away. It's a rock floating in space, falling around the sun. Or Mars is an energetic living entity here within the Earth system that affects every move we make. That to me makes more sense. We, the earth is alive. All of the lights in the sky are part of this living system. And we are part of this living system. Within Mars the dome, underneath the dome, Marth in, uh, Mars inside of the dome, Saturn, Jupiter, and all of these planets that we know are inside the dome. Is that what you're saying? Affecting us. That's what I'm saying. But they're not rocks as you think they are. What are right? they they're, then, they're, do you, do you uh, suspect? Right. So, so when, when, we, when, we look, when we look at them, I just showed you what Mars looks like. You know, here's Arcturus, okay? What is that, okay? Here's Pro Procyon, right? You, you zoom in on these things, they're not what they tell you. Here's Venus. This is what Venus really looks like. That looks okay? really round and... and uh... It's round. And even it's the sphere. Look at the lights in your ceiling. Do they dictate the shape of your floor? They have nothing to do with the shape of your floor. Yeah, but okay. nobody can really film anything very good from that distance, huh? We don't have the technology here. R well, how people. come we're able to zoom in on these things and make them bigger if they're the distances that they say? A little zoom on a you know P nine P one thousand camera shouldn't be able to do any of that. Well, that again, is true, though. Right. So this is the picture that they gave us um, of Saturn, you know, the famous picture of Saturn. But then we took it off their website, put it in Photoshop, cranked it up, and you can clearly see that it was sloppily made with uh, cutting and pasting um, layers. But then okay? why do the so, elitists, the Satanists, why do they worship S Saturn? Because- And use because that symbolism. It, that symbolism is shown everywhere, practically I'm, everywhere, I'm, trying I'm, to I'm hold with us you. with that, within that, um, in, the, in that frequency control, mind control. I'm, I'm with you, okay? They're worshiping, the, why are all of the planets, which used to be called wandering stars, named after gods? They're all named after gods, okay? Maybe they are gods in some way, and they are here in our living system, right? We are all, you know, and astrology, I think astrology is the real science. It is the real secret, you know, hidden knowledge from us. But, but we're not talking about rocks falling around a scientifically impossible burning ball of gas that we call the sun. We're talking about living entities here within a living system okay on the flat plane it, but why couldn't if, if mars and all these other planets are underneath the dome let's just take that that's what we're talking about here they're with not you planets they're lights they're lights but why couldn't they, they also be like a flat plane thing why? because they're floating. not terra firma then there's no rocks floating in space and you know that because i don't know it but it what all of the evidence that we see the only and here's the thing the only thing that we can say about any of the luminaries sun moon stars planets is their lights that's all we can definitively say but not the moon exactly. though because you can see the craters you can see everything there on but, the moon but, but i mean as close moon, as you can get 
You know, when there's a new moon, you can't see it. No one has ever, when the moon yeah, goes Yeah, but new, you can still see the shadow of the whole thing, the whole round thing. You're incorrect. You're incorrect. When the moon I've is seen waning, it with my eyes. I'm, I'm going to tell you what you saw. Listen, when the moon is waning, you can see, and it's a crescent, you can still see the rest of the moon. But when the moon goes to a full new, to a completely new moon, it is gone. And the the shortest amount of time that anyone has ever been able to 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 uh, photograph it with a any with a telescope with a camera from the space station from the from wherever um, is two days <laughs> two days i think it's like 42 hours or something like that right no one has ever been able to see it at all and well you know the globalists will say well that's because it's too close to the sun and you wouldn't be able to see it right good good story but during an eclipse but it could make sense eclipse, though couldn't it i mean why does well, why it, doesn't it, that it, make sense well because during an eclipse when there's a uh, when when there's a complete eclipse of the sun um, and you know, you just have the ring of fire or even la you know, the tiny ring of fire. No one sees them, sees the moon, right? When we watch an eclipse here, well, look at this. Here's the, here's an eclipse. What do we notice? Well, we're told that's the moon, but the dark part looks like the rest of the sky, right? Again, the dark part looks like the rest of the sky. The dark part looks like the rest of the sky. The dark part, the, this is done with a filter. So it, black and you don't really get to see anything because when you use a solar filter you don't see anything the dark part looks like the rest of the sky it doesn't look like the moon the dark part looks like the rest of the sky but that, that again, could be the reflection again. how we see it how we perceive what is what is light what, and colors and whatever what i'm showing you is we never see the moon approach eclipse or exit the face of the sun now when we go and see from nasa again the dark part is just the missing sun I think it's being eclipsed from the other side. I could show you um, how that happens, but it that would take a few minutes and you'd have to be wanting to hear it. The dark part is just missing, okay? And then NASA will show us a, a picture. Um, <coughs> so in here. But notice that, that the dark part looks like the rest of the sky. It never looks like the moon, right? What do you actually think the moon is then? I mean, do, do you think a lot of people have said that it's an artificial object and some people even say reptilian brought, reptilians brought it in here, drove it in here for also for mind control and controlling our frequencies and the menstrual period and, and mood swings and, and the tide and all of those things that we know from the moon but and but we only see one side we only we never see the dark side of the moon which is also interesting if everything is spinning and all planets are uh spinning balls let's just say so the moon certainly is a very interesting object what do you think what what is the moon do you think i don't know but i think it has to do with the delivery and removal of souls Right. So that when we die, the soul leave the body and go to the moon as a kind of a first kind of a reincarnational station or what? I think it's beyond what I'm able to understand, but I think there is a connection and that's why it syncs up with women's reproductive cycles. The, the, you know, everything is a fractal of everything else. I believe that every point in our world is connected to every other point and every point has all of the information of all of the world in it and so once you understand that that's how this realm works then you understand the power of your thoughts then you understand how limiting how how it makes us sick shortens our lives weakens us to believe we live on a globe flying through an infinite space vacuum absolute and total nonsense let me but just we have certainly you. on on this program also talked about the fact that it could be like a har harvesting station the moon but maybe it's also used for other things if there are aliens on the moon they talk about also operating on that the other side that you can see yeah. and and maybe it is part of a um, this reincarnation karma wheel factory death trap that we've also been talking a lot about on this show. I don't know if you are into that as well. 
uh, well, I don't believe that the moon is a physical object, so I don't believe that there's aliens on the moon. If you go out on a bright moon night where there's some, you know, spaced out clouds, you'll see that the moon is lighting up only the clouds that are right near it. That's impossible if it's a quarter of a million miles away. Um, the light that we call the moon that we see is very close, and it's lighting up the clouds that are right near it. Um, I don't believe. I believe that we all see it. It can even light up a mountain. It. I've been standing there suddenly when the, the when the moon appears. Absolutely. It's but, full. But you can you can light lights up a, a a big area. But it, no, it lights up everyone that can see the moon. It lights them up, but it lights up only the clouds that are near it. So to me, that we're viewing that light we call the moon. Um, not too far from the clouds, but as we move, it moves. As we rise, it rises. So we go up in an airplane, it moves away because we're seeing it in what I call our personal atmospheric zone. Let me show you what this that is. has to do with distance, and we're we, uh, we don't understand. We cannot perceive distances, right? Not really. Let me show you. Let me show you. So what no one has ever. Whenever there's an the eclipse of the of the sun, no one has ever been able to see the moon. Approach eclipse or exit the face of the sun. They never filmed it from the space station, from a, with infrared. No one's ever been able to see it. We see the eclipse happening and we're told it's the moon. But here is the real eclipse that I filmed. And here is my fake eclipse. What I have going on here is this is a rear projection. I'm projecting a light onto a paper towel and I'm eclipsing it with a um with a a cap which i'll show you in a minute so now this is a real eclipse and the, the eclipse is literally like 85 90 percent here it's blowing out the lens you can't really tell but we saw this what is this that's right? a reflection this it's what, uh it's uh well, what, what are you, lens flare lens huh? flare lens okay. flare okay let me explain okay <laughs> This is a lens flare because it's moving with the lens, but this one is locked in position. No matter how we move the lens, it's locked to the sun. Okay. And now you, the only reason we can see this is because the, the sun is in 95% eclipsed right now. And it's not as bright. And for, we're the, just at the perfect angle, the perfect conditions, and we're able to see it. So pay attention. Watch this. Now, here's my eclipse. I have a rear projection. And I'm going to show you, um, this is basically, I'm just bringing in a, a circular cap in here and I'm creating, we, we don't see the cap approach. We don't see it eclipse and we don't see it exit. We just see the eclipse kind of just like we see an eclipse in the sky. So what if the sky is our screen? The source of the sun is beyond that screen and we're seeing it projected. So here I did it again with a, um, thinner tissue and here is the projector behind this is the eclipse projector behind, okay? And when we compare it to a real eclipse, it's the same thing, right? So I just did a demonstration showing you that I can recreate exactly what we see in the sky with a rear projection eclipse. I don't know. Yeah, but the but light is not that heavy when you're doing it in your living room. I mean, it's a totally different strength of that light. It doesn't matter. What I'm showing you is this is a way that you can have an eclipse that no one could ever photograph the thing that's eclipsing it, how this can be explained as the projector behind the screen of the sky. Okay. And um, let, me, let me, let me show you just another way on how we all, we, we see um, things like that. So here is, this is a, um, where is it? Where is it? Here we go. So, I have a sheet um, hanging, dividing my room in two. On the other side, I have a flashlight, which actually has a square lens, but it looks like a sun and we see it right here. Now, my, my partner is on my left and I say, Paige, point to the sun, right? And I'll go over to her point of view and she's pointing to the sun. She sees it right there on the sheet. So I do a little X on the sheet and then I move over. I see it over here. She still sees it over here. So we're seeing the sun in two different positions at the same time. And if I eclipse it from behind, it would eclipse. I wouldn't see the thing that's eclipsing it. And it kind of explains what's going on in our sky. Again, I'm just throwing some ideas out there on the app, the flatter sun, moon and Zodiac clock app. Um, check out the frequently asked questions and click, click the eclipses. It can be found at flatearthdave.com. Um, and check it out. It's a $3 app, um, but you don't even need to get the app, go to the website, and take the crash course 
I offer three Bitcoins if you can watch five of the videos in the crash course and then give me one globe proof. Yeah, and, but you will and, never give people those three Bitcoins, will you? Because you can always uh, explain why they, th their suggestions of the globe model is not so because you have another very good explanation, though. I mean, uh, it, it isn't a very interesting debate where it, uh, the people who believe in the globe model, they have very solid proof because that's you know that's basically well-known science but also you and others who are into the field of flat earth theory you also you've also really gone very very in-depth and and basically thought of of everything uh, to to counter um, you know question and and explain what my, my, my point is you know we can see too far Okay, you have to come up with a crazy globe excuse why we can see too far. Um, you know, if you look at southern flight routes, have you looked into southern flight routes at all? Southern flight routes prove the earth is a globe. And, you know, people will say, well, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense because, uh, you know, the, 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 the airlines need to take these routes, right? Buenos Aires to Qatar, they stop in Rome, right? This is where the World Cup was. Right? They left the World Cup, they went to Rome, they got more fuel, and they flew to Buenos Aires. On a flat earth, it makes perfect sense. On a globe, it makes no sense whatsoever. So let's just look at another one. Why doesn't this flight from Auckland to Cape Town just cut across the bottom of the globe instead of going all the way across the north, right? All the way up to the north, because it's a straight line, practically a straight line on a flat earth, right? Here's the World Cup again, right? They went over here and then down on a flat earth. It's a straight line, right? And people say, well, they went to visit the the Pope, you know, um, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't buy it, right? Um, but so the 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 answer is the the people say, well, the they, they have to go here because um, it makes more sense for the airline, right? Check this out. You want to go from Santiago to Sydney. It goes all the way up, all the way across, and all the way down. If you want to go from Santiago to Western Australia, well, why don't you just cut across the bottom of the ball? This is even closer on a ball, but they go all the way up, all the way over to China and Singapore and down. If you look at it, Santiago, United States, China, Singapore, it's a straight line. Well, well, it, why well, are well, they well, well, it, Every time I fly from Denmark to, to the United States, we always go across Greenland and over Greenland and over Canada. And if you go to Los Angeles or Las Vegas or something, something like that, I think it's only you go over London and whatever uh, if you go to New York. And that makes right. well, perfect the, sense on a globe. You can see well, it no, there, it actually, actually, almost there. It actually doesn't, right? So, you know, when you go across they go all the way up and curve over and they go well that's the the great circle route uh, it happens to be a straight line touching all of the same points on land right touching all of the same points here's greenland here's greenland mm -hmm. okay and and when you look at the map i mean the the whole globe map makes absolutely no sense but the the argument that comes out is um the emergency landings the, that that they they actually have to go because they're picking up passengers they have hubs whatever nonsense Sometimes on an airplane, somebody dies, somebody has a heart attack, someone's having a baby, they need to land the plane. Here's one, they're going from New York to Hawaii, they had an emergency and they went all the way up to Seattle, right? Which is a thousand miles out of the way. How did they get there in 15 minutes? And why did they go there? And the answer is because Seattle is right on that plane route, right? But what about pilots then? thousands of pilots should actually come out then and say what we've yeah. been told about the globe is not the truth because I have discovered that the earth is totally different and it's flat. That's how we have to fly it. I mean, so, so many I'm, would have to come out and nobody does that. Well, you're incorrect. You haven't seen. And we, we've interviewed pilots and uh, we interviewed a KLM pilot and the next day she was grounded and fired. Okay. Uh, all of the, we, we've talked to many Qantas uh, flights, so those are the pilots that fly out of Australia, 
They all know the earth is flat, but they say they can't talk about it. They talk about it amongst themselves, but they'll be fired. They'll lose their jobs. So they okay? actually, they have actually come out and, and talked about Many, it and said so it. On the app, and the frequently asked questions, it says, what about all pilots and scientists? Are they all in on it? Click that. And there's tons of videos of pilots admitting that it's flat. Okay. Um, and they use a flat earth map. Again, Dallas to Beijing, and they went to Calgary. They got there in no time flat. Why did they do that? Okay, I got to show you a couple more, and then this is this is gonna the last one is gonna blow your mind. All right, so the, here's one from New York to Auckland, and right here, emergency. They went to Fiji. Why did they go to Why did they go to Fiji? Right, and the answer is because New York to Auckland, Fiji's right on the line. There's a zoom in, boom, Fiji's right there. It's not over where they said it is on a globe and you no have and, and what you're saying is the truth you have proof that this is what they did they did land at those i'm going to show you i'm okay. going to show you that exactly but this is the last one i want to show you this happened the last uh a few months ago right um hong kong they were going all the they ended up in germany but they're going to the uk which is right over here okay and uh it's 12 12 hour flight four hours into the flight um family's flying little kids father mother mother dies suddenly in her chair dead okay they could have stopped at 50 different airports along the way but they didn't they flew for eight hours could you imagine sitting next to your dead mother for eight hours as a little kid on an airplane oh my god why did, did that really why didn't did that really happen yes it really happened and the reason is because they were over russia the whole time Right. And if they landed in Russia, Russia would probably be very helpful. They'd be the good guys. Can't have that in today's climate. And the other thing is, why the hell are we flying over Russia? Well, pilots admit they fly over Russia all the time. Most of the time, pilots have no idea where they are, except when they're taking off and when they're landing, because they don't fly. Right. The plane flies itself. Right. And the plane flies China, itself. Plane autopilot takes it the whole way. The pilots take off and land. Guess who's in charge of all all international flights, all major flights? Guess who's in charge of the flight routes? NASA. NASA. Okay. So when you look at it, um, and again, don't believe anything. I just showed you a whole bunch of memes. But my friend Eddie, <clears throat> Flat Earth USA Banjo or Flat Earth Banjo, whatever you call him, um, he wrote a book called 16 Emergency Landings. It's free online. There's a PDF. You can look it up or you can order it from lulu.com. It's a great coffee table book and he documents everything. All the news articles, the flight routes, the times, everything, where they landed. It's all documented for you. All the work is done. We've done the work for you. Okay. And when you look at this, there's no denying it. And there's more than 16 now because people are dying suddenly all the time. You were actually recently in a very, very heated debate with uh, a rather now pretty famous uh, <laughs> YouTuber called Professor Dave. Well, you yeah, share yeah. the same name, though. Well, but his name he, is he, Professor a, Dave. He calls himself. And I'm Professor Flat Earth Dave because I declare myself to be a professor, just like the failed musician declares himself to be a professor. And he now admits, which is not even true, that he has consultants and, you know, he doesn't know anything, but he consults with other people. Yeah, but um, he went to the university um, yeah, and got it, the degrees it, and whatever, didn't he? Or so what? he has no degrees. He has no degrees. Okay, but you, but you actually, musician. but you went into so, this heated debate. And I'm just going to ask, talk about this because this was quite eye-opening, obviously. And clearly this guy was not very nice and, 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 and foul language and, call, and name calling and all all the kinds of things that we do not want on this channel. Would do, a child would no, do, we yes. don't. We don't. We don't like to, uh, that that kind of uh, well discussion on this channel. Certainly, I know they do it a lot, and I've also seen a lot of flat earthers go really berserk and and use on a lot of profanity and name calling when they want to get there. Uh, when they, they are trying to present their case, which they don't do very successfully then because they come across really aggressive and not very like nice people. Let, let's just say it in, in, that, in, the, in that way. Why do people act that way? Why do a lot of people uh, uh, go against each other? That's really a war against, uh, you know, they're just throwing mud at each other. Why can't you have a nice and decent discussion even though you might disagree? I don't know. People are, you know, the, the people have spirits that, you know, attach themselves to their spinal cords. I don't know what it is, right? People lose their minds. There's a bunch of flat earthers out there that just argue horribly. They're 
they're very good, very talented. They know their stuff, but they're, 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 they swear, they, they attack, you know, they do horrible stuff. They even attack each other. I don't care. I, that, uh, that's not me. I don't do that. But in the app. So can I just, w- that, let's go back let, to your let app. Answer. Yeah. Let me answer. Let me answer your question. Okay. Okay. The, so flatter, so the, that debate is pushed by Google. Use Google um, anything flat earth that, that goes to the top of the list. However, Google doesn't understand. People like you, you watch and go, well, why is that professor acting like that? And that's going to make you more interested in finding the truth. Why is he behaving like that? Well, the truth is he just uses logical fallacies and ad homs. And uh, we have we have a very um, an independent channel that's not flat earth that examines debates based on logic, right? So if you click debunking the debunkers, um, right in there, the top one, is the Professor D- Dave debate, and he literally keeps score of all of the um, the ad homs and uh, logical fallacies. And Dave, you know, not a pro- real Professor Dave, uh, broke the record for the most uh, lo- logical fallacies ever in a in a debate. So but but what's what, what's his it. thing? I mean, why why do you think that he wants to? Um repeat what we already know what is official science what's his what's his goal what does he get get from this is he i mean why does he do it do you think well you know i I, there i always i go back and forth between paid or possessed um a lot of people say oh he's a paid chill paid chill paid chill i don't know if if it's paid chill i think he's possessed but he is paid you know his video he did one which is all just nonsense and um and uh um straw man arguments you know saying oh flat earthers think this not true and that's why this you know which is his belief or his thing absolutely ridiculous but he got 10 million views on it that's forty thousand dollars okay he's making lots of money from youtube and you search anything flat earth he shows up at the top right so he and and he is not shadow banned or ghosted by youtube is that is that how it is it's it's it, it, he's promoted like you can search he's promoted guide to, free flow you you can search a stranger's guide to flat earth 21 questions which is one of the greatest videos that'll turn anyone into a flat earther in one one sitting and professor dave's stuff will come up and not that video but again in in my app go down to the flat earth movies hit that one i guarantee that you can't get through three of these videos without becoming a uh, globe denier, at least. So, to, I mean, I have 200 million questions here also from people. I don't think we can go through it actually today, but but um, I would love, because I find it very fascinating now that we are going totally yeah. open-minded here, to go back to that whole, you said, oh, there are so many ties to Star Wars, this fascinating movie universe, and uh, yeah. on, on the other side of the ice wall and all those continents. And we talk about this alien the right. existence of I, aliens. I, I highly recommend this book, The Navigator Across the Ice Wall. Check it out. It's a cheap book. You get it on Amazon. Um, read it and think Star Wars here on a scientifically possible flat plane. It's fascinating, right? But here's the thing. I want the right to explore Antarctica. That's all we're asking for. You're we never going to get that, go huh? Explore. No, we won't. Because um, on the app, again, if you hit the uh, question mark, and you go to what about Antarctica? There's a video called "Sorry, Antarctica is closed," and um, you watch that. One of our our guys, who's a lawyer, um, showed you how you, you can't. Uh, they will never let you explore Antarctica. So again, you got to ask yourself, why are they hiding Antarctica from us? There's something. There's something to it. But why? And I asked you that a long time ago uh, today. Why but, the lie? But, but we. Why, why do they lie? Yes. Why are they globalism? Why is everything a globe then if you believe it's flat? I mean, why do we have to have that perception? Why do we need to do that? And also, in the beginning of the show today, you said collective consciousness. We talked about law of attraction. Whatever you think manifests. But if, if we collectively can manifest things within this, what we do expect to be a holographic universe in a way. That's at least how we have also come to understand it here. We talked a lot about this being a holographic illusion. So if we all believe it's a globe, doesn't it turn into a globe? Doesn't it manifest as a globe like law of attraction? Yeah, so let me uh, let me give you the 
final answer on this. They're hiding more land. They're hiding technology. They're hiding that you're at the center of creation. They're hiding the true power of your mind, right? There's three laws, divine law, which is the law of God, common law, which is the law of the land, and then statute law, admiral maritime law is the law of the sea or man's law. And in order to convince man to give up his divine rights and their common rights, you have to convince them that they're not divinely created and in a divine world. And they put us in the prison of a heliocentric globe where pond scum turned into a fish, turned into a squirrel, turned into a monkey, turned into a human, right? That makes you insignificant. It makes you flying through an infinite universe. It makes you weak. It, make, it, it limits your thought. They're hiding cures. They're hiding our true divinity. They're hiding our true power. I believe that your thoughts can move mountains, but they've taken that power away from us. You look at all of the old buildings, all of the old structure of the old world. Um, we can't even fathom how they did it back then. And some people think they did it with thought. Well, they've taken our thoughts. They've calcified our pineal glands. They've, they've limited us. They've locked us into a globe. And, you know, when people say, why the lie? If you can't see the lie, it's kind of hard to be understand that the war that we're in, this is the most important, um, the most important uh, deception that they have because with it, they control us. They keep us weak. They keep our lives short. They keep us sick and they, they keep us limited in our ability to manifest. How can we break out from this, let's say prison planet yeah. system and uh, away from this mind control, the collective mind control, the frequency control, everything as Nikola Tesla says, yep. everything is frequencies, energy and vibration. So how Absolutely. can we change that? How can we break through uh, and go away from this satanic spell that is holding us captured? There's two things that we need to do. One is get off of their playing field, get off of their globe and realize that we are in a, an expansive, um, incredible, limitless, resourceful, filled, un, not overpopulated, um, magical, uh, incredible world and that we're incredibly powerful beings. And the second one is to get off their monopoly money, right? Because they control us with money and they control us with putting our minds in the heliocentric prison. Once you step, if everybody watched this interview, let's say it goes super viral and every person in the world sees it and they go, you know what? Dave's right. And all of a sudden, every government in the world is immediately powerless and dis and is over. It's over. All the universities in the world will have to close and retool. Okay. Um, and it's the governments that govern the mind, mind control, government, okay, that are that are keeping us in these prisons. And it's not, you know, the people think, oh, the governments, they can't even keep, you know, a blowjob a secret in the White House, right? That's all mind control. These aren't the people that are pulling the, the that are pulling the strings. These are puppets from the real controllers and where we don't have most people like, well, we're on a globe. There are no other places for controllers to hide. Well, yeah, there's advanced civilization to my opinion, beyond Antarctica and we want the right to explore. And you know, we have a divine right to explore and travel and, um, you know, become our true, reach our full potential. Right. And, uh, that's, that's the reason. The reason is not just mind control. It's to, keep us weak in prison. And I believe it's a soul trap. I believe that, you know, with all the stuff that's going on right now and, you know, manipulation of our bodies and everything that they're literally trying to keep us here to power their world. It's like the matrix. The matrix is a documentary basically showing you that we are powering their fear-based system. So what, and so what is AI, artificial intelligence, the super brain computer that w where they want to harvest our, well, of course our body and that frequency, but also on a soul level, they actually also want to harvest that for, for mind control and keep us locked in and feed us uh, opinions, memories and, and, and whatever, which is, of course, what we talked about is, is the future and probably already happening. What is that artificial machine? Is that actually God? Not you know, a good God. As I was talking about before, every point is zero point and it's connected to every other point. So all of the information in the world is held within every point. So is that the, the collective mind? You know, maybe we are all just pieces of God. Maybe souls are all just uh, God's mind spread out having an experience. Again, these are thoughts that are beyond the physical form. You know, true, pure consciousness is non-physical and it spirals downwards, getting denser and denser and denser. And at the very bottom is the physical world that we live in. It's the lowest densest place in um, 
in reality, well, I don't want to say reality, it's the lowest, densest place, and that's where the flat Earth exists. That's where physical reality, and when we're done, we spiral back up to zero point to pure consciousness again, and then either we come here, we go somewhere else, I don't know. I haven't been, I, I, uh, I think that we're here with selective amnesia, and there's people that know how so this So when we works. die, do we, go, uh, uh, do we go outside of the physical dome and this physical territory, you know, the, again, or? The, the heavens above might be the non-physical heavens. They might be right where we look up. You know, where they say, you know, we're 90% water or whatever the number is, you know, we're 70% water. Um, water holds memory. Water is, um, you know, a drop of water can hold terabytes of information. Well, look at the clouds, right? Maybe those are non-physical entities. This is just me talking. I'm just, you know, spitballing. Um, maybe the heavens are right there in front of us. Maybe all of the spraying of our sky is literally a war on the heavens, on uh, angelic, you know, clouds. Think about water. Water is the most incredible substance on earth, and it delivers itself to wherever it's needed all the time, right? Is that done by random high pressure and low pressure systems, or is that done intelligently? Um, again, this world is not what we think it is. Our history is completely a lie, and they have us trapped in a ball and believing, uh, having fantasies about space. Suppose that you're that, that you are right about flat Earth and the theory and everything you've explained today, and it's only a little bit. We've actually only just scratched the surface here. So we only if pe the surface. we really only have, so we can do more another uh, another time maybe. But to understand it and maybe to wake up to it, and people say, okay. Flat Earth Dave is right. Now they understand it, and then you say, now they're free. But we're not free. We're still in this slave system. We still have to put bread on the table. We still have to be enslaved by the New World Order, One World Government, Great Reset, UN Agenda, whole plan here. I mean, how do we break free from the whole prison thing? That was the main question. Even though we wake up to your truth that could be a truth or not, how does it change? How does it change anything for us? How does waking up change? Because when you unlock yourself from the heliocentric prison, you free your mind to create the reality where you want. I mean, I worked in corporate America. I left corporate America, started my own business. I had everything I did, what they call the American dream. I was making more money than I ever thought I'd make. And I walked away from it all. Uh, to follow what I felt is an important truth, to speak to people like you, to help people break free of their space fantasy um, and and claim their divinity back. And, and, uh, and how did you, wait, just here in our remaining moments, Dave, how did you actually uh, wake up to this or how did this become your truth and why did you go down this very controversial path? People don't uh, just do that because it's, you know, it's easy for them, is it? Or yeah, do no, they? it definitely wasn't easy. And I did a conspiracy podcast called uh, Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, looking at all of the deceptions that are going on in the world. And when Flat Earth was introduced to me, I laughed at it and I banned people for even suggesting that I look at it. Like, you're never you're never allowed to comment on that stuff again. You're too dumb. And then I went in with a closed mind to disprove it. And, uh, and I tried really hard for weeks. And uh, then I was like, wow, there's something to this. And then I was like, well, what difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday. As I told you early, I'm in Mexico for two months, okay? I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm actually working hard. I'm talking to you. I'm doing lots of stuff. But I freed up my life. And I have And you could do that financially, and you were okay. Yeah. I, I can do it financially, and I'm waking up millions of people. Look at this map. This but do you, map but do you do? But can you do that because you make money from presenting all of the all of these things here? I was making more money than I'm making now when I worked and I had my own business, and the business was doing fantastic. This is not about okay. So money. you put some of that money away, and now you can live from that. Well, I, I that's I am doing. I'm doing, the, it's not about money. This is about a message and this is a divine message. And yeah, but we're still in the slave system. We have to make money, saying, unfortunately. All the time, wow, Dave, you really woke me up. You took me out of depression. I was, I was addicted to drugs. I was depressed or I was like, I was just clueless. And now that you've woken me up, um, my whole life is different. I met the love of my life. I love my, I love what I'm doing now. I moved, I, you know, it frees people's mind. It takes them out of that slave mentality. Look, this is the United States. These are people that have my app. This is called the Friend Finder. You can actually find people near you and communicate with them. 
and you can do video calls with them and you can send text messages, you can send group messages out. You can, um, you know, you can, you can find people all over like-minded people. I've never met a blue dot I don't like. Every single one of them. Do people have um, to pay a lot like for that or if they want your app? Well, how does it work? Dollars. Pardon? It, the app is, as you say, how much is the app? It's no, $3. Yeah. Okay, so it's not like people can easily access that and, and afford it. It's three. So the app is $3. You get 95% of the stuff on it for life for $3. There, if you want to message people or, or, or use profiles, those are the, basically the two things um, you have to subscribe. And ready for this? The subscription is $11 a year. But if you don't want to pay it, You can just refer the app to 11 people and then you get the subscription for free. So it's like, hey, check out this app. So don't refer it unless you're like, anyone that hears about Flat Earth, they're like, where can I find more information? You're like, well, the easiest way is on this app. So you've actually created this community, this network. People can uh, talk to like-minded people and, uh, and there's an ongoing information flow there. And I know certainly that you work hard to uh, spread the message here. And I think uh, that, so, yes, so this is where I'm you are you right now. I'm, okay. I'm, Yeah. I'm in a beta test group and uh, I just started a video call. So anyone in this group at any time can jump on this call and people are having the most amazing conversations, right? You can send out a link message to everyone near you and say, hey, I'm going to call this the, the Cancun group. Jump in, let's get on a call and people start talking and they're on this thing for hours and hours and hours. If I wait just a few minutes, people will start jumping on and you can have amazing conversations with any uh, we, we've done it up to like 70 people um and it, it's crazy so again, and people, people can are, get that app and and access yeah. that information yeah. uh on your website flatearthdave.com is that how it is flatearthdave.com is the easiest way to find it because they already have you know controlled opposition on the google play store where they're uh you know have an app by the same name and it basically gives you just anti-flat earth information And it's horrible. And what happens is people get that app and then they leave me. They, they send me, um, here's somebody's jumping on right now. They send me, uh, um, uh, you know, saying, oh, your app sucks. And I'm like, it's not my app, right? So here's somebody that jumps, jumping on They're They're driving in their car. They're just saying hello. And uh, I'm, on a, I'm on a show right now just de demonstrating the app guy. And so uh, more and more people can jump on. And literally, you know, people, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang up right now. Thanks for jumping on. Um, I'm gonna, people can literally um, find new friends. People are like, like they need to hire somebody. They send out a, a radius message like, hey, I have this job. People are getting jobs. People are finding best friends. People are finding partners. People are having babies because of this. Wow, like, this is like the flat earth Tinder app. It's not, it's, it, you know what? I, I, I think Tinder is a, the way, is a very cheap thing. I think flat earthers are, are much more wholehearted and, uh, and more serious than people that are just jumping on Tinder to get laid. Okay, great. Well, you know, this, and we can certainly go on. There are so many things we didn't get to talk about. I have a million questions here that I never got to ask, but we did have a very fascinating and wonderful and in-depth debate for over two hours now. And I think this is a wonderful place to, to end for today at least, but it would be great to have you on the show again at some other point. And I just want to say, It's been fascinating, mind-blowing. People can research this a lot more to see if they believe it or they don't believe it. But certainly, uh, Dave uh, Wise, we really appreciate you being on here to talk about it in a very uh, great and, and informative way. Thank you so much for being on Age of Truth TV Flat Earth, Dave. Thanks, Lucas. And... Um Check it out, flatearthdave.com, and we'll talk about it. We'll see you next time. Check it out. Check out the FAQs, and you'll, your mind will be blown, guaranteed. Thank you. This was a very nice conversation, huh? Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you very much to Dave Weiss, Flat Earth Dave, for being on Age of Truth TV. You can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. And please like our videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications. You can also sign up for our newsletter on our website, ageoftruth.tv as well. 
Please also subscribe to our alternative channels on BitChute and Brighton. Your support is greatly needed and very appreciated. On behalf of the Age of Truth TV team, we thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.